Mr. Campbell, would you please give us your full name and DOC number, please? Arthur S. Campbell, DOC numbers 325800. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell, let me explain our procedure to you. I'm going to read some information into the record, then we're going to do a parole interview with you. Uh, at the uh, Once we do the interview and, and we have a discussion, uh, you'll have an opportunity to address the board, say whatever you'd like to say to us, and then we'll vote. Do you understand our procedure? This is Arthur S. Campbell, DOC number 325800. Uh, his date of birth is October the 31st of 1972. He's a fourth class offender. He has a parole eligibility date of June the 21st of 2024, an adjusted good time date of March the 22nd of 2055, full term date of, Ju of June 21st of 2055. He is currently serving a 51 year sentence on the charges of simple kidnapping and armed robbery after having been adjudicated in uh, a, a habitual offender. The sentencing date was May the 5th of 2006. Mr. Uh, Campbell, is that information basically correct? Sure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Campbell, your case has been assigned to Ms. Pearl Wise. She will begin our interview process. Would you please answer any questions she might have? Sir. It's good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, make sure you uh, stay kind of leaned up. I like the sound of your voice. It's nice and loud. The mic has not been working well, but it's continue to speak loud and clear. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, call out for the record, sir, how long you served on this 51-year sentence? Approximately 19 and a half years, ma'am. 19 and a half years. And you know, that's something. You age 51 and you got 51 years, huh? Yes, ma'am. Well, you just made 51 in October. Well, happy belated birthday to you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so of your 51 years of living, how long you said you served time? Because you listed as a fourth offender. How much of your life could you say you've been in jail? How many years? Approximately 22. 22. Okay, of your life. Your life. Um, you you know, you're showing ninety uh, days of programs. Why, why so few programs? Uh, inside outside dads. No, no, my question is, uh, that's a small number of programs for somebody who served nineteen and a half years. What have you been doing while you have such few programs? I'm showing inside our dad acre management and uh, and pre release. Have you taken anything else? What you well, what have you been doing? I uh, I took uh cage rage. I've taken uh living in balance. Okay, Sonny. Okay. And I took uh some some church programs or religious. Okay. So because you only have 90 days of programming. So is that right? Is that you're missing something or what? What do you think? On your master's, uh, on, you're only showing 90, 90, uh, 90 days of programming. You received another hundred and Okay, why, why are they getting that done? What do you What do you do every day now at the prison? Uh, well, I work in the kitchen most of the time. Okay, and that's been your job for a while. For the past fourteen years. Okay, what do you do in the kitchen? Serve on the line. Okay. All right. Uh, can you cook? A little bit. Okay. All right. You okay? I'm with you on that. I'm I'm, I'm right with you. Okay. Uh. Yo, uh, tell us about who you were uh, doing this crime. Because this was, I mean, it was a convoluted thing. It was a whole bunch of y'all. Y'all were just, just just doing a little thing there. Who were you doing that time? I was I was the guy that hooked up with the wrong group of individuals. I had all... Uh... Let, let me stop you right there now. In the report... Uh, it is stated that your girlfriend at the time, you told her to stab the man, and he stabbed the man. She stabbed him in the leg because she was afraid of what you would do to her when y'all got home. Oh, that's the statement that she gave. I, I never threatened anyone to, to do bodily harm to the victim. I mean, we all were, were part of the crime, but each individual did what they chose to do. I'm not... I'm not saying that I didn't participate in the crime, but I never threatened her or forced her to do it. Okay, okay. Uh, you, you, know, you know, we always ask that I was with the wrong crowd. 
did we ever get the wrong crowd? Because based oh, on the report, you were the wrong crowd. That's what they say. I, I had recently discharged from prison when I originally met her. Now you, yeah, you was on parole. That's another thing. You were on parole uh, when you committed this crime. Yes, ma'am. And I made I made some bad choices and decisions while being involved with those those individuals. And you, said you had uh, what you said you had recently you had recently met her. Y'all were living together. Yes, ma'am. Had you gotten a job? No, I was still looking for a job. I was doing odd jobs. Yeah. But you were clubbing. And that was a violation of your parole, going to club, right? Yes, ma'am. You were drinking. That's a violation of your parole. You were drinking. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so, so tell me again now who you were, how was that? I, I don't hear no ownership of what you did. I mean, I, I got into a physical altercation with the victim. But, uh... What you mean you I mean, got into, not, like you said, y'all planned this. You didn't get into a physical altercation. It was set up for somebody to meet him at the club, bring you home, right? Yes, uh, Miss Miss Charlene Johnson set up the, the, the whole situation. Yeah. And, you didn't get yeah. into the altercation. It was a planned thing, wasn't it? Yeah, she planned it, and I, I took place. I took Did part. You know in. It? Did you know the plan in advance? No, I, I got involved in, in in the, I guess you would say the middle of it. How so? You he tell me. I don't to, know. I wasn't there. You got to tell me. He was brought to where I was at, and that's when I took part in in my part of the crime. So when did you know uh, uh, that Charlene had planned all this? When when you figured all that out? When they showed up at my brother's house, man. Uh huh. And uh, she told me that he had been flashing money and coming on to her, and she led me to believe that he had a large sum of money on him. And that's when I got into the physical altercation with him. Because yeah. at the time, she had asked him for a ride home, then she invited him into the house. You guys were in the house. So she came and whispered and told you that. Yes, ma'am. And you went to the action. Yes, ma'am. So in, in that time, you were on parole. You felt like it was okay to, to attack somebody. No, ma'am. Say what now? No, ma'am. So if you're successful today, where would you live and how would you support yourself? I would live with my mother at the beginning stages of that, but I would get a job and find my own residence. And okay, what job skills do you have? Well, I mostly work in restaurants. I did a little lawn service and, and manual labor. Uh, have you tried to get a trade while you're at the facility? Have you yes, applied but, uh, I, I it said I had too much time. Okay. Uh, let's talk about your write-ups. Uh, when was your last write-up? Uh, 2017. Uh, and I think you, the record shows, and before that, it was 2015's your last write-up. You've definitely yes. been staying out of trouble, and I think you've had 22 write-ups in these 19 and a half years. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, is that right? You tell me now, don't. don't. No, so, uh, that's incorrect. It was 10. You've had 10. Oh, you're right. All right. I'm looking at my wrong notes. You're right. You had 10, 10 write-ups in the last 19 and a half years. All right. Let's, let's give the record straight now. You see how to speak up. And I do want to inform you that uh, you have law enforcement opposition to your release. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it, but they are, they are opposed. Yes, ma'am. And probation parole was unable to reach a victim. And, and it, but it, they, it appeared that he is still alive. He's still living, but he didn't seem to, they were unable to uh, have any kind of conversation with him. So we don't have their input today, your victim's input today. That's um, the records show that you have a, you have a high need for employment. That's the only, only high you have. You have uh, low needs uh, otherwise. And if you're living with your mother, where, where is that? In Shreveport, ma'am. Okay, all right. 
All right, Warren, what can you thank you for answering my questions? I appreciate it, Mr. Campbell. Um, Warren, what can you tell us about this young man? Arthur, he's, like you say, you look at his conduct, he hasn't really been any issues since he's been here. He's been here since 09, he's been a safety write up, he's been six years clean. He's just one of our trustees. He's a, he's he's a what trustee? Three trustee working in the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. Um, he'll be complete living and balance phase two Thursday, tomorrow. Okay. And he is, he is currently enrolled in our victim impact. They started that a couple weeks ago. So, so he's, he's he's trying to do the right things. He's correct in regards to the vocational stuff because a lot of that's based on how much time you have left and for the regulation. Okay. And you do have some trades there, sir. You have some yeah. trades there. You do have some trades. But they kind of look uh -huh. like you've got to be the last five years, you know, place a lot of guys in it. Okay, but uh, if we ask, so if we are making a condition of his release, you guys, okay, okay, all right. Just wanted to make sure. It happen. All, right. Make it all right, thank you. Thank you, Warren. I appreciate hearing that. That's all I had, Chair. Okay, I have a question for you. Uh, back in 93, you were arrested for second degree murder. What is that about? That was a case of mistaken identity, sir. Well, they, they cleared you that it was a mistake. Of, a mistake yes, they, of, they dismissed and, the uh, charge. I see you got a lot of gun charges. You like mm -hmm. to carry a gun, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, you, well, you can't carry one if you make parole. Sure. No, sir. Okay, I, I have no other question. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, Mr. Campbell, is there anything you'd like to say before the board votes? Well, uh, I would like to apologize uh, for my actions in this crime, sir, to the victim. I know I can't speak with him directly, but through y'all, I would like to express my concerns and you know, for his family and the, the damage that I did to him and the pain and suffering that I caused him and his family. And uh, if I was to be released, I would go out and be a productive citizen not a liability or a menace to society or my community. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Panel ready to vote? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All righty. Uh, Mr. Campbell, uh, for some reason, I just feel inclined to take a chance on you. And I'm just going to listen to myself, and I'm, I'm going to vote to grant. Uh, because of your good institutional record, 10 right up to 19 and a half years, uh, you uh, you uh, like victim opposition. Uh, that's 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 good for me. I will, would have liked to see some family here today, but you know, that's not on you, you know, completely. Uh, so my vote is to grant uh, after you complete a trade at the facility. Uh, you have nine months. From the date that you're granted, you have nine months to get some kind of trade. Uh, I hope you get moved out of the kitchen and, and take advantage of this opportunity. Because the world has changed in 19 and a half years. You need some kind of skills. Uh, and uh, once you release, uh, if there's a day reporting center uh, where you live, I want you to go to the day reporting center when you first get released. Uh, you live with your mother, she's going to take care of you for, for a time. And I want you to get you know, kind of get acclimated to being out. Go to the day reporting center for, for a period of time. And right. report weekly to your professional parole officer for the first three months. I know that's a lot, but you didn't do well on parole last time. And, and then when you go to your parole officer, that parole officer is on your side. You That's share. Right. You speak up. You share. You say what's going on. Because they don't know if you don't tell them. Our best wishes to you, sir. I'm just I'm taking a chance on you now. Thank now, you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Campbell, uh, you know, you do have a bad criminal history. I'm not gonna lie, you've been arrested on and off throughout your life. Most of it is with guns. But I'm going to go with Miss Wise and I'm going to take a chance. Also, complete a trade. I want a curfew from uh, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. unless it interferes with employment. And then you give with your probation officer and, uh, and the other conditions that Miss Wise stated. Yes, sir. Campbell, you have two votes to grant your 
uh, parole conditionally. I agree with my colleagues. My vote would be likewise the same to conditionally grant your parole upon your completing uh, a, a program that will afford you a trade while you're in the uh, DOC. Uh, you, if you're able to complete that within nine months and, and are released, uh, your conditions will be to go to the day reporting center, live with your mother, a weekly report to the probation, do your parole officer for the first three months, and have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.